Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to the Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, Toasters, if you are not subscribed. Let's get it. Toasters, I was looking at the Oscar De La Hoya documentary, and I believe it's on Netflix. Uh, might be Hulu, but I think it's on Netflix. Very interesting documentary, very good documentary on Oscar De La, De La Hoya. And if you don't know who Oscar is, former uh, boxer, former professional boxer, champion, and a few weight classes, I believe three or four um, had some, some great fights, never ducked anybody from Chavez to Floyd to, to Bernard, Bernard Hopkins to Shane Mosley to Manny Pacquiao. I don't know if he fought Miguel Cotto. I'm not sure. Um, but he fought some, some great fighters, and he was always up for the challenge. Um, but listening and watching that documentary and then – listening to the boxer Errol Spence uh, pre-fight to Crawford give interviews and, and say that um, he would lose focus between fights at some point in his career when he had too much time. He said in the beginning of his career, he was fighting like four or five times a year. And that's typically how new boxers, new professional boxers coming out of the amateurs fight. They fight a lot within one year. And then as time goes on, they start spreading out the fights, maybe three to one time a year, where they hope to get two fights in at least a year. But in the beginning of their career, man, it's a lot of fighting. There's not a lot of downtime. Um, and it keeps them busy. You know, keeps them focused, keeps them disciplined. Because there's not a lot of downtime. There's not uh, a lot of time for an idle mind. And then I go back to Oscar's documentary. And Oscar said the same thing when he had time between fights. That's when things started getting out of control. You know, really out of control. We had a lot of time. And both of these men said not only was it a lot of time, a lot of freedom, but a lot of money a lot of access. So when you have freedom and you have access and ability, ability, that's when the true test reveals how disciplined you are and where you are on your journey in life. You know, I listen to guys sometimes that, you know, uh, have been to the penitentiary or been to the military. I've been to the military. Uh, never the penitentiary, but I listen to guys and they will, some of them, not all, they will come off to be very disciplined, very focused, and they'll sell you that. But it's easy to be disciplined and focused when you don't have a lot of freedom. Jail, you definitely don't have freedom. Uh, limited freedom in the military. We don't have access, right? Uh, money, when you have the, don't have the ability, meaning uh, it could be transportation, it could be confidence. Uh, yeah, so, but when you have all those things, especially freedom and access, maybe not so much ability, but when you have freedom and access, your true colors or where you are in life will be revealed. I mean, it's a true test, it's a true mirror. Uh, it can be empowering. It can be humbling. Because in the show, you're not as strong as you think you are or you're not as, uh, as uh, weak as you think you are. Uh, but that's why I like boxing so much because it's a true uh, reflection of life. It is an imitation of life, boxing. And that's why throughout history and writings, uh, the Bible, uh, novels, fables, you see a lot of comparisons to boxing when it comes to life. Because to be a top boxer, you must be disciplined. 
You must be disciplined. You must be focused. And what's going to determine how focused you are when you have that freedom, when you have that access, is how often and how easily you can reject the world. Yeah, because... Some of you um, are not are not um, distracted. I would say distracted, or not clipped by women because you don't have access to women, right? Um, some of you is not really revealed your selfishness or your spending habits because you don't have money. Um, some of you don't do certain things because you don't have freedom. You don't have freedom, you don't have access. And so it's really not revealed how strong you are and where you are in the track of life. But how often we can say no to the world but tell us where we are. Um, and some is very visible. You know, if you, let's say for instance, if you meet with someone in a business relationship or a romantic relationship or just a friendship, a family member, if you meet with them, we'll say for dinner, once a week for a year, so 52 weeks, and they have to have an alcoholic beverage every time you guys meet. They're struggling with rejecting the world in that sense with alcohol. Um, if they have to load, have to have full course meal, this huge meal, this is a huge unhealthy meal, just, just overdoing it. Every time you meet, once a week for a year, they're having problems rejecting the world in that sense. If you guys are together and, and they can't resist ever looking at a woman's ass when she passes by once a week for a year, they can't resist commenting on a woman's figure, being distracted while you guys are talking with another woman or a woman, period. They struggle with rejecting the world in that sense. You know, and those are things I look for when I'm about to do business with someone. Um, when I'm trying to form a friendship, I look for those things. And it's not saying that the relationship can't proceed forward. But at least I know. And sometimes it can't proceed forward because to be truthfully, to be truthful, uh, their weakness may be my weakness, right? And so we really don't need to be connected. That's the fact. Sometimes you can see something in someone and you say, man, that's, that's my weakness too. You don't need to be two of us. We don't need to be in tandem. You know, I need someone who's stronger in that than me, whatever that is. And so, um, because if we connect, man, we're going to be hell on wheels. So, yeah, we, we don't need to connect. We don't need a friendship. We don't need a, a business partnership, you know, because we both struggle with rejecting the world and whatever that is. But, yeah, that's what you should do to test or to see where you are. Really monitor, really be cognizant of how you are when you have freedom and access. It's going to be the true test. And how often you can reject the world. You know, the superficial things, the material things. How often can you reject those things? Whatever it is, uh, drugs, alcohol, women, greed, materialistic things, um, attention. Uh, admiration, you know, whatever it is, man, um, you know, those things of the world that we can overconsume 
and just get us off course where we have no discipline, no self-control. Yeah, but I thought that was interesting watching Earl Spence, listening to him, watching Oscar De La Hoya's uh, documentary, reflecting on Mike Tyson's life and things we know about his life. Um, you know, even though, you know, I salute Floyd Mayweather, how disciplined he is or was as a boxer outside the ring. Floyd had his issues, you know, that of uh, the world that he struggled with. You know, a bunch of women, you know, um, attention maybe. You know, I don't know Floyd personally, but from the outside looking in, well, we do know he kept a bunch of women. And I think it's safe to say Floyd loves attention. So those are things of the world. And so it keeps us humble. Maybe that thorn in our side to let us know, nah, you got a ways to go. And to lean on one another. I know I said we should connect with certain people because we see things in them that may be in us and we definitely don't need to connect. Or we see something that's not in them that we want, that we need, and we'll connect to them. And hopefully not poison them, right? And, and their weakness is not poison us. We can uplift each other, uh, hopefully. But uh, yeah, it's just interesting. You know, and um, yeah, the life of a boxer, man, that's, that's every one of us. Every one of us is living the life of a boxer. So, uh, and a lot of these things are blatant, like these weaknesses in people and the things they can't resist of the world are blatant. You can see it. And some of it's not so blatant. You got to get the norm or it's kind of hidden, but they know, they know. And, uh, and we know, we know about ourselves who've been truthful. But yeah, Tosas, I want us to really take the time, man, to strengthen one another, to self-reflect, be self-aware, and uh, really analyze ourselves so we can move forward, we can progress and become the better versions of ourselves. And then transfer that energy, give back pull up. All right, let me know what you think in the comments, Tosis. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.